during the Unity stuff already. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'd really like to know why game developers are so rarely presented with tough questions when game journalists have access to them. For example, I would have no end of non-PC inquiries for Bungie in relation to Destiny, but it seems the game's media goes out of their way to avoid potentially embarrassing lines of questioning. Uh, is it fear of future lack of access, or are games journalists and game company representatives too buddy-buddy? No, it, it's That's like you were like, saying earlier. You don't ask questions you know you're not going to get an answer to. Like, there's if you're talking to a developer or something in a professional capacity, whether it's at an E3 or you're visiting the studio or something, there's always a PR person there, yeah. if not numerous ones, that are so quick to jump in before they even start like, answering Hey, we're not really talking about yeah, that. Like they yeah. literally won't even Let's get their mouth on open this. before. Yeah. 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 yeah, so like, it's like, you know, the, if you want that level of access to actual game developers, you don't get it through published interviews. Right. No. You get it through shadow conversations. <laughs> follow the money. You follow the money and, and you know, and find out what's really going on. Yeah. But but then it's, you know, they never want to be named on the record because right. that's you can't do that. And then that leads to like, well, we need to find a second source for this information because we can't present it as an on the record interview and blah, blah, blah. And that's how breaking news happens. Uh, yeah. is is conversations that happen outside of the traditional you know you, like you think about like uh you know the, the the way that companies view when they trot out these developers for interviews for a product it's like we don't really do that many like game focused interviews anymore yeah. um because they're this they're not they're usually not that interesting also, they're not you know unless the the person is going to be able to talk freely and, and and talk about more than just their game you end up with like the Tonight Show interview, or yeah, you know, something yeah. like that. You know, it's like know. a late Only- night TV interview that's just like, you know, I- it's it's you know, the, like the, they're the, the publishers are viewing it as promotional in nature. Yeah. The, the respective company's PR and marketing machine looks at that person as a respected person. That's why they always offer up like senior producer or creative director. It's always the person with like a super senior sounding title. Yeah, uh, but all they are is a mouthpiece to dispense the kind of marketing like, bullet points. Yeah. You will get some people who are more occasionally, yeah, yeah. And, and, but I mean, and, what, what you really want is like you know, if you talk to like a Tim Schafer or somebody who's their own boss, of course they can say whatever the hell sure. they want. But a lot of indie people seem to be. But but in these giant monolithic you know corporations with big hundred like multi hundred person teams, like and, you, you don't really get that. And a lot of developers seem like annoyed by being shackled by that. I've had yeah, a lot of times yeah, where I'll they all ask a developer it. a question yeah. and be like, ah, I want to talk to you about this, but eh, they'll like point at the PR person yeah, in the room. I mean, <laughs> that, sometimes that seems like a shitty cop out anyway. Yeah. Also, to just like deflect. It happens uh, and, a lot. Yeah, but at the same time, yes. when you've got that many layers of management and all these different yeah. corporate interests, like the amount of shit it creates for yourself yeah. in the workplace. Is yeah, like, so, you know, over the years, like, naturally, at some point, you just, you you get to a point where you're like, well, I know what the nature of this interview is, so I'm going to ask questions that I'm actually going to get something of some value out of. Right. And, and and that's why lines of questionings are what they are, what they are because yeah. those sorts of questions, the, like, why isn't that on the PC, Why you know, those are questions for people higher up on the food chain, usually. Right. And, uh, you know, those are going to be the people that are going to give the, the you know, you, you get the answer that you got uh, when when de- when they were confronted with Destiny and PC. They're like, we're focusing on, we invented the console shooter or right. whatever that right. fucking awful thing where they were like, <laughs> totally. you know, our roots are on the console where we were the only ones that mattered. It's like GoldenEye didn't exist. So anyway. <laughs> Halo is a way better game than GoldenEye. And again. Yeah, if, yeah, yeah sure. Okay. No. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you, if you want to, like. Ubisoft PR is going to be talking to the dude who said we want to avoid debates. Oh sure, and we'll we'll be talking to him in a darkly lit room because yep. this is the kind of stuff that happens. Not, I don't think he was. He probably wasn't asked like a gotcha question or anything like that. But he didn't have the message that they wanted to send. Obviously, uh, so when this kind of stuff happens, it, it uh, the the circle closes even more tightly on on. They're they're not going to put a free speaker in front of a microphone. Uh, so it's it every time something like this kind of PR disaster happens, they they just lock it down even tighter. Oh sure, yeah. and, and to oh go ahead. No, you go. Ahead. I was I was gonna say to his his last point about you know games writers and developers getting or representatives getting too buddy buddy. Like that is something obviously to keep in mind uh, at all times. But like you said earlier, that's why people go out and develop sources. You know, yeah. Like that's yeah. why you like people like Patrick make. You know, form relationships with people because yeah, but it, the only way to get the real dirt is to have people who trust you and are willing to give you that information, knowing that like they're not going to get did, fired will, for yeah, it. You will protect them right uh, as a source because they will be fired. You know, like if you're yeah. leaking dirty company laundry, like that's yeah, your exactly. Ass. Like, that, that's, it's over. Like yeah. that's, that's kind of the problem with reporting on like a you know enthusiast like consumer media like this. You know, like these are not public you know they're not publicly elected government officials you know they're not held to public account like there's no 
Yeah. You can't file a Freedom of Information Act to find out what the fuck happened with the Destiny story, you know? Right. Like, they have so much control over the material, the publishers, that is. The, yeah, yeah. Like, and the best you can do is kind of circumvent the system, but that's like a full-time job, basically. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's why we, we just don't really play around in yeah. the preview space that much anymore yeah. because we, so this, much of this it, site. Yeah, this yeah. site specifically, you know, because, and, and, you know, we dabble in it here and there where, where it suits us, where it's interesting to us. Uh, you know, an E3 and stuff like that, where there's there you can have larger conversations at times, um, and you know, like we don't play around in that because it it, it is exactly that. It, it is the, it's the interview of just like, well, here's the new gun we're talking about this month, and you know, the game's going to be out in November, and we're shipping on these platforms. Thanks for talking. You know, it's just like those interviews are of low value yep. and people stopped watching them at some point. You know, it's like with those, you know, we, I've, I don't know how many interviews like that I've done. I'm sure Brad, you've probably done even more. Um, follow the money. Follow the money. Uh, because that's how we rolled at GameSpot yeah. for a long time. And, and it got to a point where like, no one was watching those interviews. Uh, but it was still like something where, you know, they were, we were being offered them and it was like, well, do we, I mean, you know, more content's better than less, I guess. So let's just keep doing it. You know, it, it took a while for that, for that to get bred out of just like, no, let's actually not do this stuff as much uh, because, you know, it, it actually, you know, it, it doesn't benefit us because no one's watching them and it doesn't benefit the publisher because the information is stale and also no one's watching them. And that's why that's, that's part of why. A lot of the preview process, for better or for worse, has been lifted out of the press, and now EA has its own YouTube channel, and you know they're interviewing each other, and you have all these ex journalists crossing over and becoming like basically company blog updaters and running their own company news sites and stuff. Where that is now where the information gets you know broken uh, is when you know it, the press release is accompanied by this interview done by this ex journalist. That is now just paid to interview people that work for the company that he works for. Right. Um, on the one hand, that seems like it would be scary from our perspective to see the, like that amount of work being brought in house in those cases. But if yeah. you think about it, it's the same information that was getting out there either way. It's really just a matter of who was conveying it. Yeah, exactly. And that, and that and frees us up to like. Granted, we're a pretty small team, but like there are more often than not, you know, there are some dry spells in the summer or whatever, but. Like, there are always enough games typically coming out yeah. on any given week that, like, our hands are full just talking about games we can play ourselves. Yeah, so, I mean, for for us, like, and, and that was the shift that we took, and I think for sites that have been around a lot longer, that's a harder transition, and it's a harder kind of thing to get away from. Like, I, I bet that, look, I assume IGN probably still does all those interviews. Uh, I know GameSpot doesn't do as many, um, but I just, I don't know, I just, for whatever reason, I just assume IGN probably does a lot of that stuff still. Um. But yeah, you know, like, you know, we go to E3 and we focus on our nighttime show where like if someone comes to us and they seem like, and you know, we get pitched like guests for this podcast and stuff, that, but oftentimes it's like around a game's release date and the the pitch sounds very much like, do you want this person to come on your podcast and talk about the game they're making? And the answer is kind of no, you know, uh, and, and, and you know, the, the E3 booking for that nighttime show for GDC, for stuff like that. Obviously, all these people are working on games, but the selection process usually ends up being like, is this person going to have more to say than here is the latest about my one project? You know, and, and you know, people can say we do a good job or bad job. You know, I, I don't know. You know, like I, I feel like we do pretty good at it, but, you know, everyone's going to have their opinion. Um, but, you know, that's kind of what we do to try to be different is to approach different topics and and not just fall into that like we're part of the PR cycle they came around and did this interview and blah 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 like just today Capcom came through with like that Resident Evil game and mm -hmm. like do you want to see this like mm, no nah, I think you know we're okay because you know the, the video restrictions were such that we weren't going to be able to do a proper quick look EX or anything like that so if it you know in the GameSpot days the, the idea of turning down anything oh, yeah. was fucking crazy yeah so to be in this position where it's like, I mean, no, we're, we're that we'll we'll wait until we can produce our type right. of content with this game. Well, that's the key difference because back then we lived and died by the drip feed of information and access that yeah. we got from publishers, yeah. and now like we're fucking spending three hours in this godforsaken battle of wills and Mario Party or whatever. You know, like we found ways to 
make yeah. content around stuff that isn't like current up to the minute relevant new releases yeah. if we have to. And, and, you know? do, and just do different stuff. Yeah. You know? So yeah. rather than like, well, we can only take 10 minutes of footage of this, but the embargo date's coming, so we better do it. Yeah. Like we're trying to present better content to everyone out there. And if that means it's later than other people's or if that means that, you know, like we're waiting for, you know, like what was it? We could do alien footage like last week, right? But it was like it only it had to be up to a certain chapter yeah. and it could only be this many minutes and all this other stuff. It's like, well, we do the quick look. That's what we do. We could bend for this and produce an inferior video that then cannibalizes our later video or we could just say fuck this and wait until we can do our thing with that game. And instead we wait and we do our thing with that game. Um, and, you know, I, I hope that people appreciate that because that is that has been like our response to what this what this guy's talking about is the you know interviews and how much they typically suck and and how much preview coverage is typically terrible it's like we try to do different stuff and it's always just the same dude talking about the same bullet points every single time so i mean yeah. it, everyone else is getting it so i don't know what yeah like they make the rounds every single website gets it like yeah. and they all get the know, same interview yeah yeah effectively you know like it, it's not it's nothing unique it would be nothing unique to us except we would ask dumber questions i don't know i don't know you it's know? like a press junket when they have like hugh jackman sit in a chair and they were just bringing a bunch of entertainment reporters yeah or whatever, exactly you know? yeah yeah I did a couple of those that screened. It was worse because we weren't. You got, you got the chair privileges, or you have roundtable privileges, where like they actually rotate the the actors to come by. So who was like like Paul Bettany? Just like yeah, you got ten minutes, and there's like eight people trying to write a story, all asking yeah. questions. Like us, oh, it's, it's it's and that if you want to see somebody glaze over, just look at a look at a, a celebrity doing a, a you know like you were talking about the this. 18 different dudes in LA going through the, the junket chair yeah. and just like, yeah. So where'd the idea if you're at, what was it like? Or go to Comic-Con and listen to the fucking questions that people Ooh, can ask. Like Q and A type Hall stuff. H. Yeah. Yikes. What was it like working with Patrick Stewart and, and just it's the repetitive nature. Yeah. And he's very cold. Yeah. He's, he's, he's very, very, very nice guy. From what I hear. I just mean like Hank Azaria or something and going anywhere and like, Oh, do the Mo voice. You know? <laughs> yeah, Anyone yeah. who's done voices on the Simpsons ever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 